building and grounds, Kelly Hinshaw is going to report on the district's facilities and summer projects under CSIP <coughs> 03. I feel like I should have those memorized. So you will. Say. You should. You could have got I a gift, gift certificate. Yeah, you know, no, that's right. I don't have I was impressed with the teacher that that, oh, was, yeah, yeah. She rattled that was outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, you, you saw it. Uh, Impressive. Buildings and grounds and, and capital projects, major projects kind of blend together sometimes in the sense that obviously we uh, all the little things that are going on, elevator inspections and, and repainting classrooms and all those things are an ongoing process that, that uh, the board approves each year. Um, you know, about a half million dollars for just maintenance type things. But then also, um, uh, I listed here our CSIP Goal 3, which, which ties to facilities and construction. And uh, this is what our community has said uh, we should focus on, uh, or one of the things that we should focus on is you know, to uh, provide, maintain appropriate structural resources, support services, and, and just functional and safe facilities. So um, the two areas that we're really focused on with this uh, presentation uh, is uh, goal 3A and 3B uh, because it ties into technology and, and obviously we're spending uh, some capital projects dollars on technology. So I've just got some photos of things to, to run through. Uh, we have two of the three new buses that came in uh, on our transportation, which come out of capital projects fund. Uh, if you recall, approving around 285,000 for the three buses, we're um, currently waiting on the one a new special needs bus uh, that uh, has to be built uh, once you order it uh, with all the handicap accessibility and all that. So it's a special design. Um, we also installed uh, the new phone systems up and running. It was in before school started. Went uh, pretty smooth. There's there's always glitches when you're talking about uh, uh, a new system district wide. Um, just the uh, getting it to ring in the right room for the right teacher, uh, all those kinds of things. But uh, uh, it has gone really well. Ginger and her staff did a great job uh, with the company to implement that. If you recall, you approved that. Really, we, we redid the entire system in a month. So uh, you know, great job there. Uh, District-wide technology is, is just growing. Um, 1,200 <coughs> iPads on campus now as compared to 550 last year. Mm -hmm. uh, 700 laptops instead of 500 laptops. So. Uh, that, that our technology department is, is uh, maintaining. And so you can, uh, those are things that have happened over the summer. Uh, the grade level, each grade level and each elementary has a cart assigned to them. And I know, for example, down to the first grade level, um, you know, maybe each kindergarten room has five or six iPads that's available to them each day. So as they do their stations and rotate through different activities, that's part of uh, the everyday process. It's not as if they have to sign up and get the whole cart there and those kind of things. So uh, that's been a real uh, change this summer. Um, obviously, I mentioned painting and maintenance and oh, those type of things. Good. This is the junior high science hall, which uh, classrooms in the junior high, we upgraded lighting mm -hmm. in the classrooms first. Uh, and we've done that district-wide. Uh, we've been improving classroom lighting. Uh, now we're moving out into the hallways to, one, improve efficiency, uh, to reduce cost for our utilities, but also uh, uh, really brightens up the halls. So just some work that our staff did this year, all the, the junior high science wing, if you go there, the hallways have been repainted. We got rid of the kind of the gray uh, walls and went with bright white and maroon. Uh, which just uh, makes for a better place, which is what our, our community expects us to have, quality facilities. Uh, you get wow. a chance in the summer to, to re redo large areas, which are hard because obviously it takes time. And it's not some place you can't have somebody painting in this, in this facility during PE class. So uh, it's not something you can work on 
uh, during the school year. Uh, high school practice gym changed a little bit as well. Uh, if you are familiar with the old, old, old wing, 1951 <laughs> model, uh, second floor bathrooms were uh, restored over there. Uh, I, I wish I had a picture uh, before and after. Uh, before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was the small one inch green and yellow tile. Oh, the green's and gone. If you remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, for some of you that graduated there. So, uh, we're going to want that uh, back. In a few these years. are really, uh, really cleans them up and, and uh, has made a positive. I remember before it turned green. green. <laughs> uh, and we do those a uh, little bit at a time. They're all on our long range plan. 2007, uh, we addressed what we needed to do in 10 years. and. Uh, many of these things, everything on here is, are things that uh, come from that long range plan. Uh, this is just an example of an area that we had. The picture on the left is an area that we had last year, uh, but really didn't have any equipment there. Uh, this is what's there now. And uh, you can see the people that had an impact. We, uh, Darlene applied for a grant. She also had uh, money donated by the PTO and then some labor and equipment donated as far as uh, an excavator and those kind of things to help us get this done this summer. Too. Really appreciate uh, that. Um, the uh, RTI bo boiler project, uh, that's a long range plan. Uh, we've been going through the district for placing boilers. This is the one at RTI and that is uh, two days ago. So uh, if you look at the lower picture, the old boiler covered that entire concrete pad that you see there, plus it covered the pad that's behind the new boiler. So it's about a third of, of the size and, and much more efficient uh, once we get it hooked up. So it's coming along well. Uh, another thing in, in the CSIP uh, goal, our, our parents expect us, our community expects us to have safe, uh, safe entrances and, and design our buildings in a safe way. So uh, on tents, uh, on forum, if you're looking at RTI there, that's what we will, it's never technically been the front entrance, but it is becoming, it has become the front entrance because that's where the buses unload. Uh, so we've, uh, we're moving the office, the main office to that corner classroom. Uh, we installed a window to help with some visibility. Uh, we also installed the airlock uh, with an entrance so during school, we'll be able to lock this inside set of doors and force all anyone entering the building to go through the office before they can come into the building. Excellent. Uh, that RTI has not had that. Matter of fact, they couldn't even see the entrances uh, from the office. And so this is a real improvement, I think, uh, and, and will help us in, in our security quest for the district. Uh, this is very similar to the junior high and the high school entrance and Truman, uh, we're trying to upgrade them as we can. Um, RPS track, uh, this is just a photo, uh, just to remind you, you improve the track uh, facility upgrades, the refurbishment of the track, and um, just a shot, of, that's what job. it looks like right now. <laughs> uh, we're down to the asphalt in, in several areas. Uh, we've got some cracks in, in the track and grass growing up through it. And, that just needs to be addressed, which you did approve. Uh, my hope was that they would be here three weeks ago, and they're not here yet. I did meet with the uh, asphalt company yesterday. They were on site, and uh, I think you'll start seeing rubber being removed by the end of next week, is what I'm hoping, and <laughs> the week after that, asphalt being laid. So it'll be about a month and a half project once they get rolling. And uh, uh, it's a good company. I wish they would have been here earlier, uh, but we we approved the bids in July, and they had nine tracks ahead of us. So uh, they're coming. Um, just wanted to mention one other thing: the Booster Club is uh, kicking in about eight eighty five hundred dollars to help us address those orange areas. Are just some things that we felt like the facility needed that mm -hmm. what is not covered in the budget. So over by the the, the orange block over to the left, uh, uh, that is a, it uh, ties the storage building to the track, so we'll asphalt that is the intent. Um, the entrance for individuals, 
uh, hold some water there, so the Booster Club is going to help us address that. Uh, the small orange block uh, at the end of the runway, uh, that will allow us to flip the pole vault if the wind's blowing the opposite direction for a track meet, which will improve safety for athletes. Uh, it's nothing like trying to pole vault over 14 foot when the wind's blowing in your face. <laughs> Uh, so Nothing like pole vaulting, period. That's too far. We got well, to figure uh, 14 feet either way uh, is a challenge. We didn't uh, had to worry about that. <laughs> and then uh, uh, down where the shot put area is, we're talking about addressing some things there and, and making that uh, uh, where we can have some practice throwing rings in that area, not just one ring. Because uh, we, we normally have 30 students, 30 high school students throwing shot, for example. And, uh, when there's one ring, that the practice time is uh, mm -hmm. much more lengthy than it needs to be. Uh, so those are some ideas that we're working on. Uh, the culinary arts project, uh, as you recall, you added uh, we added the program this August. Uh, we've got 28 students enrolled, and uh, this is an excavator sitting in the hallway at RTI, uh, <laughs> digging up, uh, getting to the sewer lines. So we started the project there. Uh, in every project, you find surprises. You can see some conduit there that they didn't know was there when they hit it in the corner of the, of the digging area. And uh, all the power stayed on. Uh, no damage to the wires, but uh, they're going to have to replace some conduit around it. Uh, so not everything's on a plan <laughs> when the plan is uh, 20 years old. Was that the digging that was on the outside of? That's, that's also, there's a picture okay. of the digging on the outside. Uh, there's a, the hole there you see will be a service entrance to the kitchen oh, for okay. the culinary arts. Uh, where the uh, dump truck is setting will be uh, a pad where the freezer will set. The refrigerator freezer will be attached to the outside of the building as well. Uh, and, and have an entrance into the building from, uh, from that freezer refrigeration, refrigeration unit. Uh, so there will be an access road to that from the parking lot on the 10th Street side. And this is in the actual culinary arts area. Along the 10th uh, Street side. So that's the hole in the side of the, outside of the building as of yesterday. And some of the dirt that they've dug out of the ground in the hallway. <laughs> so it's interesting to have students. Uh, we've, we've got it barred off where students can't get near the work, but uh, <coughs> to have an excavator running in the hallway uh, <laughs> uh, is a little challenging. Runs on propane, so it's pretty quiet, actually. Uh, kind of neat project. Uh, a few projects still remaining. Um, we're in, in discussions with S&T uh, about relocating our two-way radio antenna and repeater uh, to the top of Thomas Jefferson Hall, uh, where we can uh, have much better coverage for our buses and also then begin to uh, build the infrastructure. Uh, currently our antenna is on top of Wyman, so we'll gain uh, about 120 feet by putting it on the tower on top of Thomas Jefferson uh, wow. building. Yeah. So we're working through a lease agreement with them, uh, and I think that's gonna work out, and then we'll be bringing you some uh, bids on the actual equipment to have to upgrade the equipment there uh, and have it installed. So that's on our, our list of, of things that are happening this year. Also, sound and audio uh, visual systems. We put these on hold. Um, we upgraded, for example, the high school gym. We did some upgrades last year. We had some others planned for this year. We're holding on some of this uh, to see how the veto session goes, to be quite honest. Um, because these are things that can wait if they need to. Uh, so we just kind of told our, our uh, vendors that we weren't ready to install them yet uh, and we would hold off. Uh, so hopefully session goes the way it goes. Uh, we would like it to go and money's released to the school districts and then we know where we are uh, a little bit better. Uh, but for example, the high school gymnasium sound right now is better than it was a year ago at this time. And, uh, but there's just some other things that we're looking at doing. Cafeteria, uh, auditorium at the middle school. Um, all these things are part of keeping 
our facilities up uh, and, and improving them as we go. Any questions? Is so the something? university is going to charge us to put an antenna on top of a building? We're, we're working through that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Seems we, a little ridiculous. We, I have a meeting set up. Uh, they've been great. Uh, uh, we had a company come with me to look at the tower to see if there was a way that we could work something out. And the university obviously has standard agreements that they sure. send out. And so they sent that to me. Uh, I've uh, uh, looked that over, kind of talked to some people on the phone. Who do I need to go to next? If we'd like to negotiate a little bit. Um, the cost is, even if we went with just the straight border plate one, uh, the cost is pretty minimal. It really is. Uh, and this would improve communication to the buses? Buses and with the upgrades that I will ask if you'd like to do, uh, it will allow us to um, have channels that if the high school administrator needed to talk to Mark Twain, for example, via two-way radio, uh, right now we don't have that capability necessarily because they can't carry that far. A portable handheld radio don't carry that far, but with this type of tower and repeater, um, those type of things would be possible. Because that um, that com that communication to the bus drivers is Correct. just yeah. so important. Yeah. And and we've struggled. Got you know, lost the child. district that's been a challenge when you're talking about <laughs> the square miles of our district and the hills and valleys. Yeah. Um, and Wyman is the highest spot for it now. Currently, it sets on top of Wyman's building. Huh, and I didn't it's, know that. Uh, it's, uh, but, but there's some upgrades that would need to happen. But this is kind of like when we upgraded our technology, mm -hmm. we had to build, build the uh, backbone first. Well, we, this, is, this would be an upgrade in building the backbone, and we budgeted about $20,000 in this year's budget to help us build that backbone, and then years after, you know, as we go. So uh, the goal is that we would, we would want to have direct communication to our buses, no matter where they are in our district. That'd be great. And we currently don't have that. Mm -hmm. So this will help us get there. Any other questions? Larry summer. and the maintenance crew, they do a lot of the work, the paint crews, uh, custodians, all those people need to be commended, <coughs> as well as you know the outside contractors that we use. But uh, things are going real well. All right. Thank you, Kelly.